how far would you go to get the wrinkles out of your face? Would you be willing to suck the fat out of your stomach and put it in your face? Well, Karen decided to do just that. Let's follow her journey and learn all about the process of fat grafting today on The Younger You. I'm on top of the world and now I'm living And the good just gets better, keeps a giving Not even close to the end, it's just beginning Life is getting lighter while the days are getting brighter, yeah And then to good, I won't even worry anymore Took all my care, still can kick them all out the door Go on and try, come and tell me what you're waiting for Move and keep them going till your life is overflowing, yeah Welcome to The Younger You. Today is about fat grafting. Some of the visible changes that happen as we age are wrinkling and volume loss to the face. A simple procedure called fat grafting can correct these issues. What is fat grafting, you might ask? It involves using liposuction to remove the fat from one part of your body and adding it to your face. Well, today we're talking to Dr. Dunkley, the physician who performed Karen's fat grafting procedure. Hey, Dr. Dunkley, how are you? I'm well, how are you, Troy? I'm fantastic. I'm really excited about today Good. because I've seen the results. She looks incredible. I agree. I've already explained a little bit about fat grafting. What else can you tell us about the procedure? Fat grafting is a great procedure simply because we usually have plenty of fat. I can take all I want, put it into the face and give you more youthful results. You can take it from one spot and put it in the other. You got it. Why are people choosing this procedure rather than the traditional fillers? Fillers are priced by syringe and it can be very expensive to put enough volume back into the face to really get a youthful look. Is there a big swing from the traditional fillers that we were just talking about to fat grafting nowadays? There isn't a huge swing. There are a lot more people doing fat grafting now than there were ever before, simply because we're learning how important volume is to the face. When you put the fat into the skin, okay, so you've taken it from another part of the body into the face, does it disperse over time? No, it really stays right where we put it. We're laying it down in little tracks underneath the skin to get the volume we want, and it stays right there. You simply just lose fat over time in certain parts of your body, and unfortunately gain it in others. <laughs> well, as I said, you can eat whatever you want and just have it sucked out later on. That's the way I've always thought. So let's just have a look at Karen's before pictures, before you did anything, Dr. Dunkley, and just talk us through what you'll actually be doing on her face. Okay. So she's looking quite baggy under the eyes, isn't she? There's a few places where she's got some noticeable volume loss. Uh -huh. Under the eyes is a common area, as well as what we call the nasolabial folds or mm -hmm. the smile lines around okay. the mouth. Where else you, will you be doing the, the fat grafting on? I'll really be adding it all over her entire face. We really? lose fat, yeah, even in the temporal areas. We lose it underneath the eyebrow. The cheeks are a huge place that deflate. I have noticed that a lot of people actually deflate, men and women, and that's why they go and have traditional fillers in the face, aren't they? Yeah, exactly. Why are we aging from that part? I don't know why, I just know that we do. We see with serial CAT scans done and people of various ages, the older we get, not only does the fat in our cheek decrease, but the bones begin to recede. So we lose volume in many ways. So when they have the liposuction, mm -hmm. how soon after you do the liposuction and store the fat, do you then inject into the face? Well, we'll do some injection in the same procedure. So we get the fat, we put it into syringes, and we spin out the uh, fluids and the ruptured fat cells, and then we inject that fat throughout the face where we want it. Okay. Not all the fat will survive because it has to ah. reestablish a blood supply. So some of it will go away. And that's why we come back later and add a little more. Dr. Dunkley, once you've done the liposuction, how do you process the fat to get it ready to inject into the face? We load the fat into syringes, mm -hmm. then we put it in a centrifuge. We want it to go through the centrifuge so that we can get out all the excess fluid. We want that fluid gone so that we don't have false volume in the face. It looks okay. like we filled it up nicely, but half of what's there could be fluid, and we don't want that. So you're basically wanting 100% fat. You got it. We looked at Karen's before shots just moments ago. Let's yeah. bring them up again and tell us how much fat are you anticipating to actually need to pull out for the liposuction to put back into her face? What's the normal amount that you would need to do liposuction here? For fat grafting to the face, I try and get about 60 cc's. That will give me enough volume to do one great 
um, grafting procedure at the time of the surgery as well as another time later. We can freeze that fat. So store we're storing it. it. Yes, exactly. Okay. That's a common practice? Yes. Okay, and depending on how much you have sucked out, um, can you have more liposuction done than what you need? Oh, or absolutely. Are you really only harvesting what you need? I, I try and get just what I need. For the fat grafting to the face, we usually don't put a patient completely to sleep. We're just numbing up the areas where we're borrowing the fat from. Okay. So it's not extensive as far as the liposuction goes. Okay. What can Karen and our viewers at home expect to see after this procedure? What they'll notice is just a softening of many of the wrinkles as well as filling of some of the indents. Mm. So we get indents underneath our eyes, we get indents around the mouth and our smile lines, we even get an indent here in front of what we call the jowl. Okay. We're going to fill those depressions in to smooth things out. I, I want you to be honest with me. Okay. What are the risks? Well, every procedure has risks. As far as the fat grafting to the face, the most common things we'll see are bruising and swelling, which can last from five days up to as long as two weeks sometimes. Uh, where we take the fat from, the, the biggest risk is that it'll be a little bit flatter typically, and right. patients don't complain too much about that. Okay, so there's no major pain or like no infections that could happen or anything like that? Those are always a possibility we always give the patients some antibiotics before we do the okay. liposuction okay. through the vein, IV. Mm -hmm. And so it decreases the risk of that. When women come in and see you and they say, I want to have the fat transfer, as opposed to fillers, are the expectations higher? They can be. I try and caution them that some of the fat we put in will die mm. and we may need to come back again. Hold on, what do you mean die? Well, the fat's living. When we pull it out and put it someplace else, it has to reestablish a blood supply. Oh. Before that happens, some of it gets reabsorbed by your body. I had no idea. Yeah. So is it true, and I wanted to ask you this about liposuction. So you've had liposuction on your tummy. I've, people often feel that if you aren't eating properly, the fat's going to come back. Is that the case? Oh, it definitely can come back. We don't take out every fat cell when we do liposuction. Right. But we should make definite permanent changes. When we remove a percentage of the fat cells there, you just have fewer places to put fat. So if I remove 50% of the fat cells around your abdomen, hmm. if you gain weight, it'll either come on a little bit slower in the abdomen, yeah. or you'll but find But it will come back. It can. If you gain weight, it can. Okay. When you have this liposuction done and then injected into the face, what's the downtime that you're expecting? I would expect three to five days and you can be back to work, as long as you don't care if people notice that you're bruised and swollen. Yes. Well, I did see some pictures of Karen, and she did look a bit of a mess. I have to be honest with you, but she was taking lots of Arnica, and apparently that does help with the bruising. Yeah, it does help in a lot of patients. Okay. I'm not saying you made a mess of her. <laughs> she, she did look a little bruised. I, I have to claim responsibility. <laughs> I made her look messy. Well, I think I had a feeling that she needed quite a bit put in. She was quite wrinkly. Well, I'm not going to say she was quite wrinkly. <laughs> you can say that. Of course I can. Yes. Of course I can, Dr. Dunkley. Thank you. Coming up after the break, we'll watch as Karen heads to Dr. Dunkley's operating room to have her wrinkles filled in and face plumped up with the fat from her stomach. Do you want the chance to win great products and services? Be sure to like our official page on Facebook to get all the details. Don't forget to join the Younger You conversation on Twitter as well. The following footage contains actual surgical procedures. It may be too graphic for some viewers. Before the break, I sat with Dr Dunkley and learned about fat transfer to the face. Let's meet Karen and watch as she actually has the procedure. My name is Karen Zabriskie. I'm 55 years old. I am here to have fat transfer. Over the past little while, I've lost over 125 pounds. A lot of that has come out of my face, and so I feel like at this point in my life, I look like my face is kind of caved in with wrinkles. Lots and lots and lots of wrinkles. So Karen, you ready for surgery? I am ready for surgery. So as far as areas we talked about putting in volume, definitely we want to fill in these eyes. You know, the cheeks tend to deflate with time and recede. 
we lose the fat where we need it, we gain it where we don't want it, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to try and reverse that just a little bit. Back in the day, we didn't use sunscreen, so I paid for that now, um, being this age with sun damage and even more wrinkles. But we'll probably put a little in through these smile lines here and in through the lips. When we do that, when we inflate, the, reinflate the skin, it tends to pull it a little tighter and just smooth out a lot of the lines and the wrinkles. And then, as I mentioned before, fat is loaded with stem cells. Stem cells are those cells that can actually differentiate into anything. So they're, they're great cells. They usually, when they're mixed with the fat, differentiate into fat. But we do know that they improve the quality of the skin as well. Mm. So when we put it in, sometimes we'll notice the skin gets a little tighter, and a little bit of reduction in the lines and wrinkles. Wow. OK. So, and we'll probably put a little bit here. There's a brow pad that we want to just put a little bit in and reinflate there. We may put a little under some of the more noticeable lines here on the forehead. When could I expect to go back to work and not scare my coworkers to death? You know, depends on, everybody's different. I don't know how much bruising you're going to have. Okay. You can go back anytime. You're not going to okay. hurt anything. For me, having fat transfer is much better, is a much better option than a facelift. I'm not a fan of uh, the length of the procedure, of, of what I would think would need to be a full facelift for me. For now, fat transfer is, is the way I want to go. Fat can be taken from any part of my body and put anywhere else in my body. So Dr. Dunkley will be taking a little bit from my abdomen, freezing a little bit more for, for later, then I'll just come back in another two times, I think. Literally, in for a pound, in for a penny, yes. <laughs> Never in my life did I think I would be a candidate for cosmetic surgery. I never even thought about cosmetic surgery, let alone being a candidate for cosmetic surgery. So in doing the research and hearing about the different options available out there and then looking in the mirror every single day, the wrinkle after wrinkle after wrinkle, I felt like this, why not? This would be, this would be a good way to go. Put a little numbing medicine down that side now. The skin's really tough, so I can't put, can't inject the fat without getting the uh, injection cannula under the skin. So right now I'm just making little holes with the 18 gauge needle that I'll use to put the fat in with. So we're going to just do a couple. Dental experience. No mouth. I think there's so much I want to say. <laughs> you can't talk and yet you want to speak. Mm -hmm. The only difference is if this was a dentist, we'd be asking you questions while we had instruments in your mouth. Dr. Dunkley made me feel very comfortable about how how the procedure is done. He answered all my questions. I probably had more than he he maybe typically gets. I'm not nervous about this at all. Um, I get forward to it. I think I have just about every poke spot I need. All right. Now we have, we start at the bottom and kind of work my way up. So here's our little cannula. We'll inject the fat through. This is just going to gross me out. So I put it in, inject as I pull back, leave a little track. Do that on multiple layers. Right now I'm filling in that marionette line right here, as well as what we call the pre-gel sulcus. So right in front of the gel you have an indentation, and if I put a little bit of fat in there, it disguises that indentation and gives you a smoother contour. Going in, lay a little teeny track with some healthy tissue around it. These are one cc syringes we're laying just a little bit at a time. I don't want to do too much too quickly. Okay, now I'm actually going to go work on the lower lip. We're going to just follow the contour of that lip. Inject. As we come back out, same thing again. Put a couple of passes in. Very similar to using a traditional filler, only 
The fat, we know some will be reabsorbed, as we've mentioned before, but whatever survives is like yours for a longer period of time than any but a permanent filler. So, and I'm going to move to the upper lip and do the same side. And then we may be able to see, at least on the camera, a little bit of difference there. That's kind of fun to see. So the problem with fillers is they all sell them by the CC. So I usually get one CC to work with, and this way I can I can use all the fat I want. So being 55, um, I feel like there's a great deal of pressure to look 30. I don't agree with that look personally. For me, I don't want to look 30 because I think it would be a forced look. But I feel like the pressure that's on a, um, a woman of my age uh, is constantly there, not only in advertising, um, but workplace, very much so. If, if I feel like if we women look a certain age, we're treated a certain way. And at 55, uh, which is the new 45, but it's still considered middle age uh, when it's convenient for workplace or society. When the choice is in front of someone to choose the 30 year old or the 50 year old. So uh, I, look, I like the idea of turning back the clock on my looks to get whatever advantage I can. I can. If you look, you can see these, this side nice and full and we smoothed out those wrinkles a lot and you can see the wrinkles on that side over there. It's nice. Now that we've reinflated those lips on that side, and we're going to go do the same thing on the other side. So we've pretty much filled the lips now. This pre-gel sulcus, everything down here. We're going to go now and work on this area. We're going to just fill right in this tear trough here. I'm doing a little bit of fat under each of these individual wrinkle lines up here in the head, the forehead, and that's going to make a really nice change. We get the dual benefits of volume and stem cell to the wrinkles. The last thing I'm going to do is work on these brow pads, just give her a little bit of volume back here above the eye and actually probably give her just a teeny bit of lift there too. My expectations are to um, have a look that's refreshed and maybe not necessarily pulled back. I hope to turn 10 years back on the clock, yes. After the break, Dr. Dunkley and I will be joined by Karen in the studio to wrap up the conversation and see the impressive final results of her fat grafting procedure. Be sure to check out the Younger You website to watch full episodes of the show, stay up to date on the Younger You Challenge and get useful tips and tricks to help you achieve the Younger You. Welcome back. Well, we just watched Dr. Dunkley perform Karen's fat grafting procedure. Now, let's talk to both of them about it. Hey, guys, how are you? Hi, fine, Doing thanks. Well. well, Karen, I have to say, <laughs> you look incredible. Thank you. Thank Dr. Dunkley. <laughs> Thank <Yeah>. Dr. Dunkley. <laughs> but before we get to that, I want to bring up a picture. You sent me a picture of what you looked like, not even before the fat grafting, but how heavy you were. Let's just take a quick look at that. Okay. Karen, how heavy were you when, when you were there? I was over 280 pounds. And how much have you lost? Over 130. Over how long? Four years. Four years, yeah. 130 pounds. Mm -hmm. Any reason why you got so heavy? Emotional eating. Okay. Yes. Okay. In hindsight, at the time, I don't think I realized that. Okay. Yeah. There's a reason why I'm asking this, Dr. Dunkley, is because a lot of people out there are watching this. And when they see this incredible result that Karen has had, but I want people to understand when you lose that amount of weight, not only is it aging on the face, but everything drops. You lose a lot of fat anyway. Is this a great way for Karen to get that fullness back in her face? Oh, absolutely. This is a fabulous way. Get yeah. that volume back into the cheeks, get those back up where they were when she was young. So the reason why I'm bringing this up again is because I really do feel that people who have lost that amount or more, they can really look quite sallow and that can make you look older. 
It's not just because you're losing the weight doesn't mean you're fit and healthy and you look amazing. What I'm saying is this is a procedure that Karen decided to have to give her that fullness back. Absolutely. How did we go about it? Well, it's quite simple. I want to know in kilos, how much did you suck out? <laughs> <laughs> well, not that much weight-wise. <laughs> but we took out plenty just to give her some volume back in the uh -huh. cheeks and the brows and the temporal area and even in the little smile lines around her mouth. When you saw Karen's before pictures, when she first came into you, and you looked around her face, did you think you would be able to get such a great result here? I knew she'd have a good result, but she did turn out even better than I may have expected. I want to ask you, you said I would never have thought of doing a cosmetic procedure. Correct. Why yep. now? I think because I did lose so much weight, I did go through lifestyle changes, mm. um, still going through them, but it's exactly like Dr. Dunkley was saying, the, the word that he he used with me was deflated. We deflate when we mm. get older. And that's exactly how I felt physically, was I had just kind of deflated and... You were looking a lot older than 54. Mm. Is it because of the weight loss, Dr. Dunkley, that she had aged so much in the face? If you look at her picture when she was heavier, she definitely looked younger. And, and we talk about people, oh, they look young, they have a lot of baby fat in their mm. face. And I don't know why it took cosmetic surgeon so long to figure it out but yeah if we put fat back into the face you just look younger okay so let's talk through you were saying that you were going to be putting the fat under her eyes around her mouth mm -hmm. around the cheeks and through the forehead is that correct yeah we actually have a fat pad underneath the eyebrow okay we sometimes will get a little bit of fat loss here through the temporal area as well the whole face loses volume so we put it back, not just, you know, people sometimes just think right here and that's it. Maybe the cheek, but we put it everywhere. All over. Karen went back and had a top up. Well, how long after the original procedure did you go back in? Um, it was about five weeks, I think. I think so. Yeah. That's about right? Is that five normal? Five to six weeks. Yeah. Four to six weeks is when I like to come back. Because by that time, we know what fat that we've put in the first time is going to survive. We know what we have at that point. So you're, you're, you know what you're dealing with, basically. Exactly. Karen, you had liposuction. Where did you have it done? Yes, from my abdomen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just explain to everyone at home, because when Dr. Dunkley says CCs, you told me over the phone, I came into your office and interviewed mm -hmm. you, that you said he took about a cup. Two. two I thought cups. it was two. Two okay. cups. Mm -hmm. And two cups. So that's when you saw thought. that, you thought, oh my gosh, that's a lot of fat? <laughs> well, not compared to what, what? I used to weigh. <laughs> <laughs> that was nothing. You were like, this is nothing. <laughs> that's nothing. It was probably more, yeah. Karen, I have to say, from when I first <clears throat> interviewed you in Dr. Dunkley's office, your confidence today mm -hmm. is out the door. Yeah. It is crazy. Yep. It feels great. It really does. I have. Um, I've been to lunch with people who didn't know I went through the procedure mm. with some friends who have I've known forever and the first thing that she said dear friend is she looked at me and she has she's had some of her own procedures but not not this kind of thing and she looked at me she said oh my gosh grabbed my face and she said you look so young what Stop did you do Dr. I want Dunkley. his name no 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 it's all right. yeah. <laughs> she said what did you do I want his name really mm -hmm. So yeah. we often see that on movies, who's your doctor? Yeah. You actually had that experience. I did. It was wonderful, yes, it was great. It was really nice because the word that she used was, you look so refreshed. And that's a nice word. Mm. And I think another nice word, Dr. Dunkley, is rested. You look rested. You don't look pulled. You don't look ch chubby cheeks again. Right. Uh, you almost look dewy, <laughs> like you just like younger? 10 years younger. I look you, like a younger you. Well, you do. You just, it's quite <laughs> extraordinary. I'm sitting here thinking, looking at your before pictures, <laughs> like I'm thinking, is it almost the same woman? Yes. And wow. often the results aren't quite this dramatic, but it's still something where people will come up to you and say, just like her friend, what have you done? Did you go on a vacation? Did you yeah. get a good night's rest? Are you using a new makeup? I mean, yeah. they can see it's different, but it looks good. Can Karen have more put in after the second application yeah absolutely. so she can come back in a month's time if she has some more fat stored I hope you do uh, I'm pretty sure I do you have a little yes. more stored <laughs> you can have that done again yes how often would you recommend someone to have more done if they come to you and say I've still got a wrinkle here or I've still got a little bit here 
How many times are we talking? I don't know if there's a limit how many times you can do it, but I'd like to get a patient where they want to be within three treatments. Okay. So the initial treatment plus two follow-up. Everyone that's watching this right now, what would you say to them if they were considering this? Absolutely do it. Call Dr. Dunkley. <laughs> uh, honestly, because it was a uh, fairly painless procedure. Mm -hmm. Some discomfort, but if you do what the doctor says, it it's, it's doesn't last at all. The discomfort goes away. Uh, what I love about it is that it's my own fat in my face. So the stem mm. cells and the whole, everything that I learned is, is great. Funny you say that. Education. You were giving her yes. education, Dr. Huge. Dunkley, as she was going along, mm -hmm. I believe. Yeah, yep. all along the way. We found that fat has a lot of stem cells in it, and it even improves the quality of the skin over top where we inject it. So there's just benefits upon benefits from this. And I hear just what she says so many times from my patients. They're like, I should have done this 10 years ago. Why <laughs> did I wait? This is Well, she was fat great. 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't need it. Well, that's right. well, true. Well, it's true. Yeah, for Let's her. be real. Okay. You know, she's just because she's thin now that we needed to put some more up on her face. I appreciate you that's coming true. in. Yes. And thank you for sharing with everyone at home your procedure. I think you did an incredible job, Dr. Dunkley. The goal of cosmetic surgery is to help create a more confident and happier you. I couldn't agree more with this philosophy. I firmly believe that you should do whatever it is that makes you happy and comfortable. If that means using your own fat like Karen has to create a fuller face, then I hope that's what you do. For more information about the show, head over to our website at theyoungeryou.tv and I'll see you next week. Next week on The Younger You, we'll chat with 18-year-old Tyranny who decided to have surgery on her nose to correct a deviated septum. Dr Thompson will show us that even a few small changes can help you look your best and greatly improve your confidence. The Younger You set provided by Madison McCord Interiors.